It's because it all goes back to one decision, to finding the courage to face my fears and to step up on that stage and to share my truth. And we all can do that. I'm so excited about our first speaker today. My wife and I had dinner with her. My wife is a big advocate and loves this gal. She reached out to me on Instagram last year and I told my wife, and my wife's like, oh my gosh, she's such an inspiration. She's been on tour with Oprah. I heard last night at dinner, because I, I can't lie, I didn't watch Dancing with the Stars. I don't, my wife doesn't miss a show, but my wife was telling me last night how Amy got robbed and she should have been the one to win in 2014. But I wanna, I wanna tell you what, it's the power in which she shared her story. Some people share their story powerless and some people share it powerfully. Some are vic victims and some are talking about how they will be a victor. And she's one of those that has made a decision to be a victor to be someone who walks out a powerful story. Her story has opened up the doors for phenomenal things in her life. And I'm gonna ask you, everybody backstage, in many Zoom rooms, online, offline, Facebook, YouTube, would you welcome to this physical stage, Amy Purdy. Give it up for Amy! <laughs> Olympian <laughs> medalist on Oprah's tour. Uh, uh, dancing with the stars. <laughs> like, I, I forgot a few of the things. I'm so glad you're oh here. Oh my gosh, you thank would give you. You give this right here. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh my God, this is awesome. You guys, this is, this is an incredible studio. This is the first time I've ever spoke in a room like this before. So I'm so excited. And I, I have a little injury. That's why I'm on crutches, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good, so don't worry. But I am gonna jump right in. I have a question for all of you. If your life was a book and you were the author, how would you want your story to go? I ask you this question because this is the question that changed my life forever. I grew up in the hot Las Vegas desert, not exactly where you expect a professional snowboarder to come from, but all I wanted was to be free. I would daydream about traveling the world, living in a place where it snowed, and I would picture all of the stories that I go on to tell. At the age of 19, I actually moved to a place where it snowed. I moved to Salt Lake City, Utah, where I became a massage therapist because I thought, with this job, all I needed were my hands and my massage table by my side, and I could go anywhere. For the first time ever, I felt free, independent, and completely in control of my life. That is, until my life took a detour. The day began just like any other day. I woke up feeling great. I went to work. I did my massages. Normally, I'd have enough energy to go to the gym afterwards, but this day, I was exhausted. I went home from work with what I thought was the flu. And less than 24 hours later, I was in the hospital on life support where I was given less than a 2% chance of living. It wasn't until five days later, as the doctors debated outside my hospital room, who was going to tell my parents that it was time to pull the plug, that I was diagnosed not with the flu like we thought, but I was diagnosed with something called meningococcal meningitis. We have no idea how I got it, all we know is one in four people carry this bacteria. It's, it's spread like the flu or the cold. So for all I know, somebody could have sneezed on me in the elevator at work, and maybe that's how I got it. But due to this little microscopic bacteria, over the course of two and a half months, I ended up losing my spleen. I lost my kidney function. I lost the hearing in my left ear. And due to the septic shock that my body went into, I ended up losing both my legs below the knees. My life changed like that. I went from being a normal 19-year-old who could throw on a dress and a pair of flip-flops and run out the door without a care in the world to now relying on machines, mechanics, and medical innovation in order to live and in order to even survive. I ended up being in kidney failure for a year and a half. I was on dialysis. And then the week of my 21st birthday, my dad gave me a kidney. So I ended up having a kidney transplant. And although I was so grateful for my life and so grateful to be alive, there were times where I was so overwhelmed 
that I had no idea what my life was going to be like. And it was times like those, times that I had absolutely zero control over, that first prompted me to ask myself that really important question. If my life was a book and I was the author, how would I want my story to go? And what this question did is, first of all, it allowed me to think of what I didn't want. And what I didn't want is I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I didn't want to be a victim. I didn't want people to say, oh, yeah, we know Amy. Oh, the girl with the disability or the girl who lost her legs. That's absolutely what I didn't want. So then I thought, well, what is it that I do want for my life? And I saw myself walking gracefully. I saw myself somehow helping other people through my journey. And I saw myself snowboarding again. And I didn't just see myself carving down this mountain of powder. I visualized it so strongly that I could actually feel it. I could feel the wind against my face and the beat of my racing heart as if it was happening in that very moment. And that passion and that fire that I felt inside, that is when a new chapter of my life began. I ended up snowboarding again after I made a pair of my own feet to snowboard in. And then my husband and I, we started a nonprofit organization called Adaptive Action Sports where we teach youth, young adults, and wounded vets with permanent physical disabilities how to snowboard. And I ended up going back to work, and I went back to school. And then at one point, I was invited to give one of the first ever TEDx talks. Now, let me tell you <laughs> how this even came to be. My story was written up in the local newspaper. I was invited back to my old high school to speak. I was terrified. I was standing in front of these 10th graders, literally quivering and like had no idea what I was talking about. But from there, I got invited to speak at a youth conference. Once again, I agreed to do it, had no idea what I was doing, so nervous, didn't know how to really put a story together or even share a message. I don't even know if I knew what my messages were at that time. But I did it anyways, and thank God I did because it just so happened that in the audience was an organizer for the TED conference. And two days later, I got invited to give one of the first ever TEDx talks at one of the first ever TEDx events. And let me just tell you, I was nowhere ready to give a TED talk. I couldn't even say, my name's Amy Purdy and I lost both of my legs without wanting to cry. And I remember writing this talk. I hated every second of it because I was so overwhelmed. I was so hyper-focused. I was so nervous. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I didn't like what I wrote. I'd crumble it up and I'd throw it out and I'd start all over again. It took me a long three months to prepare a short eight-minute talk. And I remember the day that I walked out on stage, it was in this beautiful opera theater, and it was full of people from, literally from floor to ceiling all around. And I stepped out on stage and I got so nervous that I stepped back and I told the speaking coach that they provided for us, I said, I don't think I can do this. What if I cry? And she said, Amy, trust that what happens is what's supposed to happen that if you cry, the audience will cry. Whatever you feel, the audience will feel. And you know what the world needs more of? We need more people who feel. The world needs to hear your story. And so I stepped out on stage and my, it makes, I feel it right now. My, my voice was cracking and I had tears in my eyes. And I remember at one point, looking at the front audience or at the, the front row of the audience and, and seeing everybody just cry alongside with me. They were lifting up their glasses and crying. And I felt something in that moment that I've never felt before. I felt so connected with the audience. It was so silent in there. You could hear a pin drop. And I felt like we were one, like we were all present together. And I thought, this must be what Beyonce feels like <laughs> to sing to this audience and everyone's like singing back to her. But so the video, well, let me back up and say I did get a standing ovation that day. And that was one of my first ever talks. But um, to my surprise, the video to that talk went viral and it changed the course of my life forever. And I learned that we don't need to be limited by our circumstances, but that our circumstances can open up a whole world of unlimited possibilities. 
And I also learned that the stories that we are most scared to share, because they make us feel weak, because they make us feel vulnerable, those are the stories we should be sharing, because those are the stories that make us human. And what makes us human connects us all. That one talk and deciding to do that one talk, it took my life in places I never could have imagined. I instantly was kind of uh, jumped into a corporate speaking career where I went from living under disability, I was living on $800 a month to making seven figures as a motivational speaker. I ended up going on and competing in snowboarding. I won three back-to-back -back Paralympic medals. And because of that one talk, I ended up partnering with some of the largest brands in the world, Coca-Cola, Toyota, Kellogg's. I was on cereal boxes, I was on commercials, I was on billboards. That's how Dancing with the Stars found out about me. An executive producer saw me on a billboard and invited me on the show where I danced with my partner, Derek Huff. And as soon as that show was over, I got invited to speak across the country with Oprah, which is so crazy for me to even say. And then I decided to take my TED Talk and expand it into a book. And that book went on to become a New York Times bestseller. And the reason I'm sharing all of this with you is because it all goes back to one decision, to finding the courage to face my fears and to step up on that stage and to share my truth. And we all can do that. And the most amazing part, the most fulfilling part about it is how far that speech went and the impact that that speech made just by sharing my story. It's getting letters from people from all over the world, sometimes in languages that I can't even understand that I have to translate, of people saying, thank you for sharing your story. By you sharing your obstacles, it's helped me overcome my own. And we all have the ability to do that. And the beautiful thing about the day and age that we live in is that we don't need TED. We don't even need TED to share our story. That's what YouTube and TikTok are for. You can li literally pick up your phone, film a 60 minute like moment of your life where you learned something and there's someone on the other side of that. When you press post, there's someone on the other side of that who needs to hear that story. In fact, I did that just a few months ago my TikTok, it wasn't doing very well. I mean, it was like, oh, I guess I should like film a TikTok here and there. That's where I was at with TikTok. I didn't have that many followers, but I decided I'm just gonna share my story. And I did a 40 second version of my story. I used the Splice app. I threw in a couple photos. I did a little voiceover of how I lost my legs and where it took me in my life, added some music, posted it on TikTok. And that one video that took me less than 20 minutes to make it ended up getting 13 million views. I gained over 200,000 followers overnight, but that video reached more people in three weeks than my TED Talk reached in 10 years. So we don't even need TED to you know, give us the opportunity to share our stories. We need to take the opportunity that's literally right in front of us, that's right at our fingertips, because there's somebody who needs to hear your story and your voice matters. And I know you might be thinking, okay, Amy, this is easy for you to say, you have an obvious story, but I don't know what my story is. In fact, I can see some of you guys. So if you don't know what your story is, or you don't necessarily know what your messages would be, I want you to raise your hand. Like, do you ever struggle with not knowing your story or not knowing like, what would you share if you went on stage? Okay, so I see a couple of you raising your hands. Okay, so the beautiful thing is that, first of all, the longer we live, the more stories we're going to have. We're never going to run out of stories. And we've all had moments in our life or experiences in our lives that have taught us something that we could share with somebody else. We've all had defining moments that have led us to the place that we are today and, and helped us become the person that we are today. Sometimes we just need a little bit of guidance, like a little bit of help to, to remind us that we do have a voice and we do have stories and messages and insight to share. So I am going to share an exercise with all of you. And this, if you ever struggle with trying to figure out what your message is or what your story is, this is the perfect exercise to do. So I want you all to grab a piece of paper and a pen. I can see some of you already have that out. And I want you to write these three things down. Okay, so number one, list three big challenges that you've faced in your life and the lessons that you learned from them. And you can do this afterwards, so just write the questions down right now.
The second thing is what are the defining moments of your life that took your life in a completely different direction for the better? So for example, for me, it was losing my legs. You know, that was a defining moment that could have gone the other direction, but it really took my life in a better place. And so I want you to write down the defining moments that took your life in a better direction. And then the third thing is the transitions that you've faced or experienced in your life that have changed your perspective. And I can give you all one transition right now that we're all faced with, and that's COVID. You know, COVID has changed everything. It's taken jobs away. It's made us rethink the jobs that we do. You all are here today, and this is why you're here is because you're in transition. You feel something inside of you. You want to do more. You know you have a voice. You know you can make an impact. That's a transition that you're in today. So the next thing I want you to do is after the day's over, just set your timer for 10 seconds, or for, not 10 seconds. It might take a little longer than that. Set your timer for 10 minutes. I want you to just fill all of these bullet points out, all these stories, all these moments, all these transitions in your life. I think you'll realize just how, how many stories you really have. And then the third thing that I want you to do is I want you to pick something from that list. And it does not have to be your rawest, most, uh, most uh, like, like scariest story. It just needs to be a meaningful moment that you experienced that you can share with others and that, that maybe can help them on their path. I want you to pick that. I want you to do a, a 60 second to three minute video on your phone and I want you to press post. I want you to post it on social media because there is somebody out there who needs to hear your story, not my story, not Pete's story, not Bethany Hamilton's story. They need to hear your story. They wanna hear the mom who has three kids and figured out how to organize her life. That's the story they wanna hear. They wanna hear your story because when you share your journey, you help others on their own. And right now the world is craving connection. And the way that we connect is through our stories. So don't be scared to share your own. The world needs you and your unique ideas and insights and perspectives and messages and stories that only you can share. So shine your light. Don't keep those gifts to yourself. Somebody out there is literally waiting for you to show up and to show them the way. And the rest of your story is waiting to get written. So I just wanna end this by first of all saying thank you guys so much. I'm so honored and so excited to be here with you all today. And I wanna end this with the question that I began with, the question that changed my life forever. If your life was a book and you were the author of that book, how would you want your story to go? Thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah, there you give, are, it up, there give it up for Amy. <laughs> give it up for Amy. Listen, I want you to, I want you to know something about her. Um, those questions that she popped up, they showed up on your screen. Did you write those questions down? Because remember, she said something similar to what Grant said. Like, what's a struggle or an obstacle you've had? Go help people overcome that. What's something you're great at? Go teach people how to do that. And so one of the things that she is great at is actually her TED Talk. Like, go watch her TED Talk <laughs> online. It is so inspirational, so moving. I'm going back to season, what season were you on? I think 21. I'm going back to season 21, <laughs> 2014, to watch her season. My wife made sure I knew that going in the car last night. But I want to because of the things that she's overcome and, and how she showed up. And so I'm so excited because she is an inspiration to the world. Oprah, like so many people, she's an inspiration to. And now she's an inspiration to Platform Tour. So would you guys give a lot of love? Let her see you, everybody backstage, all of our VIPs. Give so much love to Mrs. Amy Purdy. Yeah! Thank you, guys. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much.